Hi everyone, uh, how's lockdown going? Uh, firstly, I need to apologise for my um, spotty screen. I have got a crack right across my screen where my camera is. And I have to say that um, it little bits of moisture and, and whatever particles have got right under there and they are just making my... Um, they're making me look spotty, what can I say? Uh, I have tried to use my uh, laptop uh, um, to, to send this to you, but unfortunately, uh, that is way more complicated and I ran out of patience. So uh, uh, I want to um, just talk to you again about parenting in a pandemic. <clears throat> this is uh, episode two of the uh, current series season what can I say let's hope it's only one season long and uh, I want to talk today about establishing routines in our um, in our life now you will know that um, all the things that give us routine tend to be things that we can go out and do so obviously our preschools and our schools and our um, clubs, our sporting activities, all the rest of it give us uh, routine. And uh, we used to use routine um, differently back when our mums, our grandmas, our great grandmas were um, parenting. They would have much more of a strict regime at home because they didn't have all these activities to go out to like we do today. So um, now all those have been taken away from us and we have to think about establishing a routine at home. And uh, I'm going to talk a bit about that today. First of all, I'll talk about establishing a routine. And then I'll also talk about establishing a routine for teens. They are obviously a little bit more complicated and nuanced. Routine helps us all to feel secure and to know where we are. And part of the anxiety that we're feeling is we don't know um, how long this is going to go on. We don't know what, where, where we're at. If it's true for us, it's certainly true for our children. Routine provides their security and uh, their security and their sort of sense of knowing where they're at is uh, based on their routine. So we need to establish a routine, a daily routine, to help them. Now, children who feel secure tend to have more bounce back ability uh, when things go wrong. And they also um, are more able to cope with, with life. So children who are feeling anxious or insecure are more likely to have a meltdown uh, just and completely lose it. Um, you can't get rid of those episodes entirely, but it will help you if you can establish a daily routine with your children. So uh, what can we do with our children to keep them uh, well? Um, so. A routine gives us the ability to get things done. It also gives us time to spend with our children. So think about having a set pattern for each day. If you like, we might think of it as a timetable. And you might want to be able to uh, show that to your children in some form that you have um, a, a daily set pattern of behaviour. Now... My mum uh, always used to give me helpful ideas. Like have a target so that by 10 a.m. you've done the morning basics. So by 10 a.m. I used to say when I had two little ones, we will all be up and dressed. We will all have had breakfast and cleaned our teeth and, and had a wash. Uh, we will have made the beds and cleared away the breakfast things, put a load of washing in if that needed doing, and then... In those days, 10 a.m. is Teletubby time, and we would sit down with a drink of juice or a coffee, and we would have our mid-morning drink together and watch Teletubbies. So it's work 
or root or, or or chore or obligation however you like to think about it followed by a sort of treat to target you're working towards so uh, that is a really good principle with establishing a routine that you do something uh, and then after that do some have something nice <clears throat> Having said that, try not to use food as um, too much of a reward or a boredom killer. So um, having a routine of doing something followed by a treat just means that you're building in uh, your meal times and snack times and controlling the, the snacks. Because when we get bored, we're likely to rummage uh, and our children are no different to that. So um, uh, having a routine with little ones helps us to think about fitting in our essential jobs in the day. Now, when we're when they're out and about a lot and we can get things sorted at home, it means we can have a really great tidy home in theory. We may have to just relax on the on the on our perfection. We ne we may need to become more realistic about what's possible when we're at home all the time. However, um, having a routine will help us to um, think about um, uh, fitting in both chores that we need to do and also planning playtime with the children. So chores we need to do, there are, they fall into one that children can help us with. Now, uh, things like dusting, uh, making the beds, uh, laying the table, all these things children can help us with. And it helps them in their routine to know that it's job time and play time. Uh, so it takes longer when they help us, but it is helping to use up that time of day. <clears throat> so... Uh, yeah, because part of our time, our problem of having all our structure outside the house now, all our groups and activities that we go to means that we use home time as relaxed time, unstructured time. And so this unstructured, yawning, cavernous day after day uh, means that we've got problems and uh, we need to uh, just put that's where we need to put the structure in to keep our sanity <clears throat> so uh, there are some jobs that we won't want our children helping with and I would encourage you to have them play independently while you're doing these things rather than commit to putting them on a screen while you do some things we don't want to use screen time too much and we do want to encourage our children to play and amuse themselves independently. Otherwise, we're going to be going absolutely bonkers if they are relying on us to occupy their time uh, day in, day out. <coughs> Excuse me. I've still got my tickly cough. One really great tip my mum gave me years ago was um, prep your evening meal in the morning. So I would typically do this uh, after our Teletubbies and mid-morning drink. Get the meal as ready as you can. Peel the potatoes, get the carrots done, etc. Whatever you're doing. <coughs> Marinate the meat so that um, the most stressful time of the day is slightly mitigated. That sort of end of afternoon time. Uh, it just takes the pressure off. <coughs> Excuse me. It also means that uh, our children have our time, our attention after lunch, which is a really great thing to be able to do. Um, so because we're at home more, we can make a little bit more of meal times with little ones. So have a meal time routine. Setting up the meal time uh, is nearly time for lunch. Let's lay the table. You put these on the table. I'll get the cheese out, whatever it is. I do beg your pardon. Secondly, uh, sit down at the table each meal time. Usually we are uh, rushing around trying to um, get them to eat something so we can go out to our next group. 
that's not a problem now so we can enjoy sitting down together regularly uh, and then <coughs> oh excuse me i didn't think that i had this cough anymore then uh, after the meal obviously don't spin it out <coughs> but do <coughs> Uh, then clear up. Once we've cleared up from lunch, we can go and play. So again, it's job followed by something we want to do. <coughs> the, <coughs> excuse me. The same principle is this uh, is true of all the different things we put on our timetable. So playing, what are we going to play with? Let's get it out. Enjoy playing together and then um, put it away uh, we need to put it away so there are lots of ways you can um, make uh, putting things away less of a chore uh, one thing you can do is put on a tidy up song uh, we have one of those on our uh, i've put the link on our teddy bear club um, thing uh, post up from monday you can make it into a game uh, the box is hungry let's fill up his tummy you can make it into a competition. Uh, you can uh, say who is going to put the most in the box. Uh, I wonder who the winner will be. Uh, so uh, I would also um, get you to think about. Um, hang on a minute. Let me look at my. Yeah, think about toys, making a difference with your toys. Now, we often say children, um, we, we they have loads of toys and they don't play with any of them. Uh, one good thing to do is to uh, think about where they play with their toys the most. So perhaps the living room. Put a small selection of toys in your living room and then um, make, so maybe one construction toy uh, one role play like the tea set or um, the doctor's uh, kit or the builders the builders outfit and things uh, one um, musical toy good to limit those uh, one uh, small world like the farm or the doll's house or the railway uh, a small selection of books a small selection of puzzles a small selection of vehicles uh, and maybe one or two other toys that you have and then uh, keep those out for seven days and then uh, so you might they might want to be Monday morning we have a new selection of toys or you might want your new selection for the weekend Saturday morning wake up oh, all new toys uh, out uh, you will be amazed how much they enjoy engaging with their toys when they're limited it's one day of keeping one way sorry of keeping play interesting a difference from uh, one period of time to another uh, screen time try and watch screens together uh, one thing that I used to do with my children was we would have we would take turns in turning the screen off so once we'd watch what we'd said we were watching we would then um, turn it off uh, and it's your turn or it's my turn or it's her turn to turn it off and once they've got responsibility to do that uh, and it's their turn to do it, they're very keen to do it. Uh, so that's a, a good little hack. So once we've finished watching uh, Peppa Pig, it's your turn to turn it off. And then we will uh, put our wellies on and uh, run about in the in the muddy garden, whatever it is. So remember to something they like. So even if it's a small thing, a job to do turn it off followed by the next thing so always bill what's happening next in the routine so that they know you know what's coming up next so they'll do this and then that can happen <clears throat> try and build in variety so some quiet times like we're going to have book reading time uh, we're going to uh, have rest time we're going and then we're going to have a busy time we're going to have uh, a noisy time or a messy time, um, etc. So 
there in other words there are the different times in the day and also there are different times each day sometimes they're entering your world when they help you with chores and help you to to do the set up the meal etc other times of the day you are entering their world so when you enter their world let them lead the play ask them how you can do it how you can fit in uh, and so on what's my job now what do you want me to do with this now um, shall Teddy go to the hospital or whatever it is so that uh, you're mixing it up so that they are in charge of some parts of the day uh, some parts of their world uh, one really good thing to, to bring interest into a routine is to give each part of the day a, a fun name. So you might want to think of a better name for nap time. Uh, my mum always wanted us to rest on Sundays after lunch, uh, probably because she was exhausted and needed a break. And going for a rest on our beds was boring. Then we came across uh, at, at a camp um, they called rest time horizontal half hour and once we knew about horizontal half hour or HHH we never complained about having a, a half hour rest on our beds again for no particular reason it just had a more interesting name we bought into it as, as children so think about what you can call things to entice children to do it uh, one good thing just to have in your mind uh, as parents is to um, think about the end of the day that uh, you might want to just check in with your children. Days will seem the same, but um, if you say at the end of the day, perhaps at tea time or in the bath or at bedtime, what was your favourite thing today or what did you like today or how did you, who did you help today? What did you learn today? What can you be thankful for today? It helps you think back and work out what was unique about today. It might be similar to every other day, but there are special things about each day uh, and it will help you to remember and to mark those. And of course, you can say to your children, my favourite thing was uh, the sunshine or um, playing with you or phoning granny. Uh, I've missed seeing her recently it was good to hear her so just to to touch base about the uniqueness of every day and finally I would say uh, take the rough with the smooth if all days are largely similar uh, now your that your children's nap time your children's bedtime will become quite predictable and uh, that's not a bad thing because although you are in the house a lot more, you know exactly when your breaks are going to happen. And that's a blessing. You'll know that, OK, I've got another hour and a half of this, but by 1.30 or 2 o'clock, it will be nap time and I'm going to get an hour's break. So, you know, take the rough with the smooth. Um, uh, and uh, also uh, to help you manage the, the differences in the days, you might want to take photographs of the things you're doing, make a little notebook or scrapbook or online um, uh, album of, uh, of this time. It's quite unique and unprecedented and, and your children will look back in years to come and say, yes, we lived through that. Like um, my mum lived through the Blitz and my grandma lived through the Blitz and, and regaled me with stories of, of what it was like. Uh, I'm sure that our children will do the same to their children and grandchildren. So make a record of what it's like for them. Uh, there's positives there. There's sort of pulling together um, family life and community that they will look back and remember. <coughs> I do beg your pardon. So uh, thinking about our teens and routine for them. Well, of course, they're uh, quite a different kettle of fish uh, uh, and it, we will need to encourage them to uh, make time for work. They will have school work to do for uh, chores, for relaxing, that's just, you know, winding down, for socialising and for exercise. 
Now, uh, before I talked about um, uh, just saying that for some things, we can relax on things for them. So we can relax on being so strict of getting up. They can basically have a lie-in probably of about an hour every single day now, uh, even on a work day. So we can relax on getting up time. We can relax on our screen time regime and allow them a bit more because of being in touch with their um, friends. That's the, going to be their major social outlet. But of course, we have to bring in um, these other things and just try and monitor them, make sure things get done. <laughs> it's good to uh, ask them to do chores around the house. It helps them to, to learn to be independent so they can leave, uh, leave us and know how to run their own homes in future. Uh, so we do need to try and enforce uh, a daily routine of uh, work, chores, relaxing, socialising and exercising um, that uh, we and they will all agree to do together. That means you can't leave your chores till tomorrow, but you can choose when during the day you will do your chores. So uh, it means that you can organise your exercise and your socialising. You can choose which way, way round you do them, but you do need to, to make sure you do your daily exercise and make sure you have enough time to engage with your friends. It also means that they need to choose how they're going to split up their relaxation time. That might be reading for pleasure. Uh, it might be gaming. Uh, who knows but uh, you know that there's for them to decide they've got a budget of time for, allocated for each of these let them work out how they're going to spend it and the order they do it but it must be done within each 24 hour set now of course for teenagers our major problem is uh, they need to take responsibility for themselves that we need to help them to be motivated how will we do that? Well, uh, it kind of depends on what they like. However, um, motivating little ones, uh, you could, it's quite easy to give them credit by giving them stickers. A sticker is a credit of I've noticed and I've given you this small reward of a sticker on your chart, uh, which is building to something bigger. For um, teenagers, you might want to talk to them about what sort of system they would like and how it would work. Um, you might want to start to think about something like at your own unique um, currency that is like a Bitcoin, so a virtual currency, because you don't want to get into making credit notes or anything, um, for your family. So you can receive a virtual payment for each task completed on uh, on your daily re re regime or routine and depending on how well you you know do it depends whether you get your full accreditation your full payment and um, obviously if you spend too long socializing or relaxing uh, then you might get a fine uh, but um, uh, so I'm I'm sounding quite complicated, but really you just need to agree a principle and then say to your older kids or teenagers, could you work out the specifics of this system? So it's their system and they are kind of imposing it or, or on you. You have to agree to it, of course. Um, but if you say you work out the details, just keep it really simple because I can't do complicated. Uh, and then you and they can buy into the system of reward together um, it's up to you whether you zero accounts every week and start again it's up to you on how the person with the largest account is rewarded um, do they get to be the banker and accountant for the following week do they are they the ones who choose the movie for family night for movie night on saturday uh, does the a person with the largest credit choose Friday night's meal that everyone is going to eat. Uh, what is it going to be? Uh, of course, you want to keep it quite simple. You don't want to end up giving people sort of credits of real money 
or I don't think in this particular climate because we don't know how work and is going to work out. We don't know how long this is going to go on for. Uh, don't overcommit in terms of rewarding, um, I would say. Uh, so uh, it's really finding a way to help them develop a system that motivates them. And, of course, you and they, as teenagers, are bound into it together. You can sign it off and both all agree that this is how you're going to do it. Uh, of course, um, by having a, a buying into their daily regime, you are, of course, measured with your failures and successes and do feel uh, make that same space that we've already talked about to share how it's going. Uh, how you're feeling. I'm feeling great today. I'm feeling a bit frustrated today uh, because uh, I didn't have time to, to do my exercise or only had time to do half my exercise. I'm feeling a bit cheap stuff. <clears throat> but I just want to say a word about teenagers. Um, teenagers, as they, be, as they get older, we, we have been giving them incrementally more um, independence and due to circumstances beyond all of our control, that is taken away from them. And um, we want to, it, you know, it's just removed from them. They're, they're stuck at home with us now and they must be feeling pretty upset. So the question is, how can we give them a measure of autonomy and independence within uh, the regime we're setting up? Um, we need to acknowledge as well, teenagers are always just by virtue of being teenagers their emotions are very heightened they're they're prone to mood swings uh, a great deal it's just how they are uh, and if we look back to how we were as teenagers we can really empathize and empathize with their sense of pressure that they feel under from the world uh, a lot of our teens will be feeling really gutted because their exams have um, been taken away from them They'll be feeling fearful or uncertain about how grades are going to be awarded. They're feeling trapped and isolated with us. Of course, that's their worst possible nightmare. They're being kept from their friends, which, of course, is their utopia. <laughs> so we do need to empathise and understand how they're feeling. And whatever we're doing, put ourselves in their shoes. And for our teenagers, we really need to invest in communication with them. We will feel frustrated with them, being cooped up with them quite a lot. Uh, but we just need to think about how we're going to communicate with them. Uh, what I tend to re refer to, unfortunately, is being bossy, lecturing <laughs> um, uh, how things should be, um, we can get frustrated and threaten and shout uh, at them. Uh, we can tell them that, you know, uh, you just need to buckle down and do it. We know best. So, um, you know, that sort of being a, a know-all, which is really off-putting. We don't like know-alls and neither do our teenagers. Uh, we can ask them, bombard them with questions. Why did you do it? Why aren't you doing it? Um, when are you going to get round to... Um, well, we all do it with our teenagers and it, we sound horrible. Just describing that list of possible ways of behaving towards them is horrible, isn't it? And it's, it, in fact, it's not, none of those are going to help them to communicate with us. If they are being um, grumpy or stroppy or sulky or having teenage tantrums slamming their doors and shouting... Behaviour is communication. It's telling you that they are not feeling great about life. Perhaps we just need to wear that. Uh, we need to think about um, how to help them through it. For our communication with them, listening is communicating because it's allowing them to say. So ask an open question like, you're not yourself. Are you okay? and wait. Don't worry if it feels awkward. Just wait. Patiently. Give them eye contact. Show that you're giving them time and um, 
see what they say. Uh, remember that our behaviour is communication as well. Think about the different ways that your behaviour can say, I love you unconditionally. You can always come and talk to me about anything. We can say it with our words, but actually our behaviour communicating that is way more effective and backs it up a thousand percent. If you can get your um, your teenagers to understand that you can empathise with them, that you understand that it's difficult, if you allow them to have some autonomy in their routine and some flexibility, if you can um, slack off in some places when you impose something new somewhere else, if you can understand how they're feeling being stuck in with you, then it will help you to establish a cooperative routine. So routines for old littlies and oldies, I hope that's been of some help. And um, I want to uh, get back next time and talk about um, establishing some family traditions in, in the uh, crisis. Just special things you can do during the crisis that will um, really make this a golden time and an opportunity for you and your family. I'll finish there and I uh, hope to see you soon. Take care.